Thank you very much, Geneva. And uh, I want also to thank to the officer of the representative on freedom of the media uh, for this invitation. And I will address the second question, which is more or less overlapping with the former speaker. Can protections and privileges of professional journalists be extended or reinterpreted, reinterpreted with regards to open journalism activities? And I'm more or less in the, with the same perplexity. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, I will try to conclude that maybe, and in certain cases, certainly yes, but with some risks. <clears throat> uh, the idea uh, uh, from which I begin is that the freedom of the press is a legal and human rights consequence of the freedom of expression. Uh, the existence of freedom of the press is a consequence of the freedom uh, of expression and to guarantee uh, this freedom of expression. And that's why journalists have some rights and are subjected to some specific duties that are different from other normal uh, citizens. That's why I like to call journalists in some way, they are citizen plus, because they have a statutory protection to guarantee freedom of the press and to guarantee to all of us freedom of expression. And this definition of what is a journalist can be, as I said, a statutory definition, a legal definition that, uh, for instance, exists in many countries in Europe, or a material or sub substantial uh, definition. And the definition and the difference between a journalist and one who is not a journalist consisted in the past, a peaceful past, in a certain set of legal, ethical, and deontological rules that clearly distinguished the normal citizens from a certain profession, uh, from the actors of this profession. Uh, so, if someone provides information in social media, should these benefits, these rights, these privileges, and also these duties uh, be extended to other citizens acting materially as journalists? The first problem that I have is in defining information, and the second problem that I have is in defining information of public interest. As, I, as we say in Portugal, the devil is always in the details. And first, I don't believe that we can identify information with any content. I think that we all agree on that. But secondly, <clears throat> I think that sometimes it's very, very difficult in a concrete case to distinguish information of public interest from information which interests the public. This is a major frontier that I can assure you, because I was a regulator for, for six years, is never, never easy to define in a specific case. And then, even if we accept that it's more or less easy to define information and information of public interest, we have a second option. You can accept the citizens should be the holders of certain journalist rights and privileges and move forward. The, ca the question was, you, you could accept it as, it as it is. You can not accept it considering that in democracies and in real, real, real democracies, freedom of expression already protects persons, whoever wants to access to and to disseminate information in social media, or you can realistically may not accept this transfer of rights and privileges in general, but try to define some criteria and, for instance, accept that it may be necessary in non-democratic environments. Not friendly, uh, friendly environments for the freedom of expression. But I think that there are some uh, strong arguments for accepting with a very cautious, cautious approach uh, a certain 
uh, recognition of rights and duties and privileges of journalists in general to all actors of uh, social media. First of all, with the digital revolution and the, the existence of a potentially uh, universal public sphere, it's very difficult, as my, the previous speaker said, it's very difficult to consider that the world was as before. Secondly, and very important, I think that we are assisting to a growing uh, professional approach to information by normal citizens that are not uh, journalists. This is uh, a reality that I can see every day. There are some uh, sites, there are some blogs that are more respectful sometimes of journalist standards than uh, the uh, uh, usual practice of journalists. And finally, and finally, we are assisting now to a new accountability of the journalistic profession. That is to say, if someone published in a traditional media, in a newspaper, or in an, the online edition of a newspaper, something that is wrong, it will be immediately corrected, very differently from 20 years ago, where he had the monopoly of the public sphere, and it was not contested by normal citizens uh, as we are. But there are also some risks, in my opinion, in the acceptance of this general uh, 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 transfer of rights and privilege to social media. First, what I call the horizontal myth uh, and the new law of the jungle. Uh, of course, there are magnificent uh, citizens uh, using their freedom of expression in social media, but the idea that everyone, that's why I speak of an horizontal myth, everyone is using its freedom of expression to contribute to a better world and to a marvelous public sphere, I think is a myth that should be uh, not, uh, uh, not accepted. And a very recent study uh, uh, in the United States about the Snowden case showed that the majority of persons who intervene in social media have now the tendency of discussing these topics outside the social media. And we risk now what someone has called the spiral of silence. And to find in Facebook and so on uh, beautiful cats, beautiful dogs, but no real debate or if you want to debate, you close the debate to whoever you want and you create your new ghetto where you can discuss with someone who will not insult your mother or call you a Nazi uh, five minutes uh, after the debate begins. Uh, secondly, <clears throat> if anyone can be recognized the rights of journalists, no one is a journalist. If everyone can vindicate, even under certain circumstances, to be the holder of some rights and privilege of journalists, no one is a journalist, and we are speaking about a new level, a new standard of the freedom of expression, but probably we'll be discussing the end of the necessity of distinguishing the freedom of the press, and the freedom of expression. And I found <clears throat> very, very interesting, as I said, the evil is in details. Even in the, the guidelines, uh, uh, the 2013 social media, media online, there was a, something that called me my attention. And you, for now, for now, it is not a question of replacing professional journalism with citizen reporting, for now. These are the two words that call my attention. It's a very interesting approach. For now, it is not a question of replacing professional journalism with citizen uh, uh, reporting. And that's why I think that if you don't differentiate in some way freedom of expression and freedom of the press, you will finish with no journalists. And I think that that can explain, in certain ways, the profound crisis in traditional media. 
mostly in small countries where the market has not the dimension to able these traditional media to survive. To tell you the truth, in Portugal, <clears throat> we are a country more or less with 10 million, uh, 10 million persons. The, the newspaper who sells more is under 100,000 per, per day. The newspaper, the newspaper of reference sells now more or less 20,000 per day. And so, if you kill, if you kill these traditional sources, I'm afraid that we'll kill someone, something very important to guarantee afterwards that even, even me could be uh, accepted as having certain rights and privileges of journalists. And so I would be very cautious in defining what are the rights and what are the privileges under what circumstances in which we can accept a material identification between a normal citizen and a journalist. <clears throat> so, to conclude, uh, I think that, first of all, it's very important to define in what circumstances we can extend this protection and also this responsibility. There is a very interesting uh, legal disposition in Portuguese law, the law of the Portuguese regulator of media. And the <clears throat> are under the jurisdiction of the media regulator natural or legal persons which disseminate on a regular basis to the public on electronic communication networks any content which is subjected to editorial treatment and organized coherently. So this is a criteria. And the Portuguese law can benefit of being recognized as media actors with all the protections and all the duties, those who act as journalists. And so there is a great difference between a professional status and an approach which, if, which, which must, must be defined in a case-by-case -case, uh, case -case approach. And we had several cases on this issue. And the first thing that I discovered is that sometimes the regulator must intervene not to protect, in a democracy, not to protect a site or a blog, but to consider if it is acting as a journalist, for instance, with public money. And the first case was with the city of Porto. <clears throat> the mayor of Porto, the previous mayor of Porto, didn't like journalists at all. He did, to say the truth, he hated them because he considered that they were always making a dirty war against him. What did he do? He created a site like an on online newspaper, very well, a very good site with lots of information, and he made uh, for several times editorials attacking specifically uh, newspapers. And for the first time, the editor of the main newspaper of Porto, presented a complaint against the mayor of Porto, asking the regulator to recognize him, for instance, the right of reply that should be published in the site of the mayor of Porto. And we accepted it. So <clears throat> this goes for both sides. You can accept to identify materially social media interventions as journalistic, but you must have at least some criteria. For instance, under Portuguese law, a blog can never be subjected to regulatory intervention because it is a blog, because there is no editorial treatment, and because prevails, in this case, the freedom of expression. But I can speak about other aspects after in debate.